Hey, it's Eric, or Eraser Mice, uh, and um, I want to sh talk to you about my BB-8 drive mechanism here that I'm working on. Uh, so yeah, I'm working on a full-scale BB-8, um, and I'm trying to make it as accurate and functional as possible. And that, you may have seen the sphere and stuff in other videos, but this is uh, the drive design that I'm working on. Okay, so there's a couple of different schools of thought with regards to uh, running your own BB-8. Uh, and the, you basically, it is either a hamster wheel uh, or hamster ball where the, there's a, the, the body is a ball and you have a device that runs around inside like a hamster, uh, you know, like the remote control car or a little, little uh, carriage that, that drives around that uh, has complete mobility inside but uh, has some issues with stab stability and uh, some functionality and stuff, or you have what's called a single axle drive and, um, uh, or it could be a, a hub or a hub or axle to drive. Most of the other ones are, are based on this. And that's where basically it drives along a single axis. Uh, you can imagine having a, an axle that goes right through from side to side in some way. And then it just basically shifts its weight in there and rolls, uh, it shifts its weight on that axis and, and rolls. Um, that's uh, the drive, the, the design I decided to go with, and I'll talk about why uh, as I talk in here. So, okay, um, this is I'm using 123D Design from AutoCAD uh, or Autodesk because it's free, and uh, it's actually pretty easy to use. Uh, it doesn't quite have all the cool features of some of the big gun CAD programs, but uh, it's it's pretty neat. Uh, quick to you know, definitely quick to sketch up stuff. Okay, so here's my drive mechanism from the front. Uh, and uh, you gotta imagine that this is in a ball, uh, and uh, the sides over here, these, these little tripods uh, with the gears on them, those are attached to the sides of the ball. Um, so they form, normally there'd be an axle that went straight through. If you've seen some other designs, a lot of them have like a straight through axle or a plate. Uh, I decided to go with a kind of a tripod thing here because it would be hopefully much more rigid and strong because tripods tend to be pretty strong. Um, and I'm also trying to conserve as much space over on the sides as possible. And when I do have to use up space, the idea is to have it basically, the, the, the things that are in there be rigid with regards to the sphere so that I can attach things to them. If I do have something like, you know, a little arm that pops out or something like that, uh, panels and things, they can actually attach to uh, this without worrying about it because that stays rigid with regards to the sphere. So let me... Uh, show you what these things look like here. Uh, I'm going to move this one out just a little bit so you can kind of see. Uh, so yeah, it's got uh, three legs and a gear on it and a stubby little axle. And the stubby little axle goes into this uh, set of bearings here. And basically, there's two bearings, one on the front and one on the back of the carriage, uh, or each side of the carriage here. Um, you can see one and kind of see the other one in the back there. I don't know if I can highlight them. Uh, basically, there. so there's a dual pressed bearing there that this shaft fits into so that the weight is carried uh, on there and onto here, right? So it's very much like the pirate ship ride or a Ferris wheel uh, at the amusement park, lo and behold. Um, so that's what uh, attaches the sphere to the drive chassis in here. And the other cool thing about this is you'll notice that you can see straight through there. And the plan is to use a slip ring uh, so that I can put all sorts of wires and connections from the sphere side into the drivetrain side so I can do things like charge my batteries and uh, have lights and signaling and whatever kind of power needs to go back and forth uh, through that, through that connection there. And slip rings are really cool. Okay, so you have this thing on this side, similar thing on the other side. Now, you've got the big carriage in the center. The carriage uh, drives by shifting its weight, so it kind of turns in uh, uh, the direction you want to move, and so shift weight gets shifted and the ball rolls in that direction. So let me push this back in here. Now the one thing that uh, 123D Design doesn't do that I wish it did is like really cool animations and stuff. So yeah. Um, there's lots of much cooler videos out there that have lots of animations and things. I'm going to stick to functionality here. Okay. So if you look here, these blue, uh, they're idler, or excuse me, not idler. They're uh, actually pulleys at this point, but they're just placeholders. Uh, imagine being gears. These gears drive these gears, right? There's a motor attached to the carriage, 
behind a shaft that connects these two gears. So that motor motor drives this shaft, which drives these two gears, which m cause the carriage to rotate around the two big gears on the outside. And lo and behold, that makes it roll forward and backward. Okay, so it can't move left and right using just that. It can only move forward and backward. So how does it move left and right? All right, a couple of different things can happen. You see these big green kind of half barrel, half cylinder things on the front and back? Okay, yes, they are uh, sort of pendulums. They're big weights and the batteries are likely, you know, anything that's heavy uh, in the drivetrain hopefully will be in here. So there might be some lead weight and batteries. And um, basically uh, there's also a servo on the front and uh, the servo will cause this thing to rotate to shift its weight from side to side on this axle. Okay, the axle runs all the way to the front, uh, from the front to the back. Um, and as it shifts, it's gonna push all its weight in one direction or the other. You can imagine, you know, if it, right now the weight is all towards the bottom. And if it shifts this way, it's gonna wanna lean that way and vice versa, okay? Now the uh, motor itself is gonna shift with the barrel and that's fine. Uh, it's only going to shift by like 90, degree, 90 degrees in each direction, so a total of 180 degrees, so I don't have to worry about it getting wound up or, you know, it doesn't continuously rotate, so it's easy enough to have wires go from here to other parts there. So that's going to be a fairly beefy servo on each side. Uh, if I pan, you'll see the back is just the same. Um, <clears throat> uh, they're independently driven uh, in some designs or in most in all other designs I've seen, they actually usually just have a single pendulum. Uh, here I'm using two because uh, it's split by what's going on in the center. And also, theoretically, um, it might allow me to do some things like uh, shift them independently. So I shift one in one direction, one in the other direction, give it a little bit of a twist, and that might cause it to spin uh, on the spot a little bit here. Um, but uh, I actually have an, another system down below to help it with uh, how BB-8 kind of spins. But Anyway, for the most part, these things are going to shift back and forth uh, in coordination with one another. But there are two motors because they're separated in the middle. Okay. So, yeah. Um, whoops. So, BB-8 rolls forward, backward, uh, leans, turns, and so on. But it also does tend to, or it does have this cool ability to kind of spin around uh, on its center. Um, so that it can't get, you know, stuck in a corner, that kind of thing. It doesn't have to, like, back in, back out sort of thing. So to do that on the bottom here, and also to help with uh, overall weight, uh, by having some weight in the bottom, it helps it stay upright without needing, it's a sort of passive stabilization. But um, if you spin uh, an object, and right now you see there, there are these two spinning wheels. Um, I like the dual flywheel approach because it keeps things nice and slim, but let me see here. Let me show you. Okay, there it's in the sphere. I'm going to hide a few things as we go here. I'm going to hide those. Hide my movement cone here. Hide these spare motors. Okay, um, so you could just as well have one big spinning wheel at the bottom. Um, that's a possibility. Uh, and that's similar to what some of the other designs are doing with regards to, you know, just you spin that wheel. It's, it's reasonably heavy. Uh, and now we have to, during the design, we definitely have to get, kind of balance the weight up here and the weight down here because if you have too much in one or too much in the other, then it's basically going to, you know, too much weight down here requires more weight for it to shift left and right up here to, for it to lean. And if you have too much weight up here and not enough down here, then it's going to become stable, in, in, yeah, unstable or the spinning isn't going to have the desired effect, which is to twist the whole rotation of the body. So, yeah, that's going to require some fine tuning. Jeez, I'm getting all kinds of, uh, I gotta learn how to uh, shut off my notifications. So the shifting around here, whether it's this version or the split version, and believe it or not, I've, I did another video where basically if you have two flywheels and you like move them in opposite directions, um, you can actually achieve the same result as a single flywheel uh, with a little bit less efficiency. The reason I'd wanna do that is if you look at this, you see now with a bigger flywheel, it kind of sticks out the sides a bit. And I'm hoping to actually sort of avoid that because I want to have room in here for some panels and things. So I'm going to leave this for uh, phase two-ish, you know, kind of put the flywheels in because even without that, I will be able to roll backward and forward and side to side and shift weight side to side to steer. And maybe even by swinging these two independently, um, be able to get a little bit of spin. So I'm planning for spinning wheels on the bottom, but... Um, that's not required to get him up and running in some form, at least. So, 
Okay. What's going on in the center here? I can't leave that uh, leaving that for last here, though. So BB-8 has a head, obviously. Um, and uh, its head is one of the most challenging parts. You know, how do you get it to, the head to move around on top? And uh, generally, uh, the basic trick is to have magnets uh, in the head and magnets on the end of a mast or a shaft here. You see this is this purple thing is the uh, going to be the, the magnet holder. There's going to be some magnets up here um, that are going to rotate around. And this is a motor that's going to spin that shaft. There's going to be some gears attached down here. That's the simple part. Um, this might be changed a little bit uh, to you know just provide a little bit more rigidity. So it's going to spin around here. Um, the tricky part is how do you get it to move forward and backward and side to side? Now, in order to do that right, that motion or the mast has to rotate around the center of the sphere. So the exact center of the sphere is actually right exactly in here. And you notice I have a set of gears, a differential here, that is going to basically be able to provide my uh, rotation forward, backward, left, and right. And it's a little bit complicated. It's not nearly as straightforward. It's not like one motor moves it back and forward and the other one moves it side to side. Um, there's uh, a set of two servo motors here in the bottom. Here's one. And then the other one, you can see the, the servo horns here on the other side. And each one of those controls one of these bevel gears, the left and right bevel gear. And the second, uh, the, the third bevel gear is just held in place by the relationship between those two. Okay, so... Uh, feel free to Google differential to find out, you know, the word differential drive to, to understand how a differential works. But long story short, if I, uh, imagine if you move these and turn these in opposite directions. So one moves clockwise, one moves counterclockwise, or this one's moving, say, clockwise there, counterclockwise there. And that's going to cause them to rotate around this center, around this one. And if they rotate in that direction, that basically means they're moving uh, in, in that direction. So that would mean that this and this are going to rotate like this if you move them, if you rotate those two motors in opposite directions. Okay. Now, if you rotate them in the same direction, what happens is, imagine, you know, this is this is moving uh, counterclockwise and this is moving... Oh, wait, do I get it backwards? Counterclockwise and clockwise. Okay, if I move them opposite directions... Um, it's going to, to cause it to go side to side. If they're moving the same direction, it moves them front and back. It's kind of weird. Um, trust me on this. There's another video where I can talk a little bit more about that. So basically, if they move in exactly the same direction, they move front to back. If they move in opposite directions, it causes this to rotate and they move side to side. So like this one, for instance, now, this differential locking up is going to cause this to stay steady and it's going to pivot at this point here, right? So if I click on that, and I say, all right, rotate that. Uh, if I can find my little pivoty thing here, yeah, then that is going to rotate, right? Because the motors themselves are going to remain rigid at the bottom, and they're going to rotate this axis. Think of it that way, right? So the motors are rigid, so any rotation is going to be around this axis because this also locks them up and the axle is going to stay rigid with respect to uh, itself. All right. So I think that kind of covers it. All right. So we have the gimbal in the center that handles the head movement forward, backward, uh, left and right, basically 360 degrees around. Uh, then you have the shaft, which spins the, the head up top, 360 degrees of spin. Then you've got the two rollers here. And I can actually even hide the the top part here is really just for show at the moment. I'm going to hide that. Um, and these are going to be ha have weight and batteries in them, maybe some lead, I don't know. Um, so let's see, did I leave anything out? No, I think I showed you all the guts and glory in here. Uh, now it's a matter of tweaking it and sort of getting things together and... Uh, you know, making sure things line up, make sure things, some of it's going to be 3D printed. There's going to be a lot of um, stainless steel or, or, yeah, stainless steel studding or rods, threaded rod and, and whatnot, kind of giving it rigidity. Um, I'm thinking, you know, because of these things are, are, are fairly beefy sections in here, I think overall I'm, you know, I'm very optimistic about uh, the rigidity. Um, there's lots of, you know, support through here. These things are going to be nice and uh, beefy on the support on the sides. 
Um, I've been looking at you know some some plus size servos on here, uh, the ones uh, that some other people have used in their designs. So they're already sort of tried and true. And uh, okay, so stability. Uh, how is it going to stabilize itself? Yeah, there's going to be lots of twitching going on, uh, which is the idea, really. Um, this these twitch side to side to keep it stable left and right, and overall the motors can twitch. Uh, front and back to kind of provide stability in that direction. So it's going to be actively stabilized. You know, that's certainly going to be a key part of it. Um, it's going to be like flying the space shuttle or, or one of these F-15s. Yeah, you know, you can sure you can sort of do it by hand, but you really, really, really want software helping you to do it, um, providing the stability and even the translation between um, where you want the head to go and what the two servo motors have to do on the side. Uh, thankfully, I'm not too scared of the software. I'll get there. Uh, trust me. All right, so um, hopefully more info soon. Uh, please feel free to comment, subscribe, ask any questions. I've really been throwing this out there so that people will hopefully, you know, if, if I'm if I'm doing something wrong or I'm misinterpreting something or I'm just missing it, please feel free to ask, uh, point things out. Uh, I can take um, the the hopefully some some the helpful criticisms. Uh, yeah, it's going to be it's not. It's completely ideal with regards to, you know, the, the, the weight is kind of high up, but that's sort of on purpose to make it a little bit twitchier so that it doesn't use up as much power when it's trying to do stabilization. Um, you know, if I had a bigger swinging pendulum, that might be more effective in some ways, but it would take up a lot more space. And that's one of the things I'm trying to avoid. You know, I want it nice and compact. So if I have, you know, my, my thumbs up that pops out or my um, taser or, you know, I don't know, dart guns that shoot, whatever. Um, they're not going to be encumbered by, you know, lots of things swinging out to the side. You know, what's really going to wind up happening is in here, especially with the uh, split flywheel version, everything is very contained, right? As it spins, nothing sticks its its head in here. Nothing is actually moving. You know, like you can imagine, like, all right, yeah, from here to here, and I'm going to make it so the head only moves a certain amount. Um, Outside of here, there's going to be no motion at all, so it's going to be just reserved for, you know, what's what uh, the panels might be doing. And if I don't want panels, well, you know, then we can put a bigger flywheel and let the head move further. Uh, maybe even uh, design some some weights that have a little bit more, um, you know, they shift some things out. So who knows? All right, until next time, um, this is Eric signing off. Thanks for sticking with me. Take care.